Welcome back. You're listening to Morning Ireland at 14 minutes past eight. The Green Party is sending out signals about how NAMA could be improved and made more palatable to the public and their own supporters in particular. This in a week when, at the end of which, on Saturday, uh, the Green Party members will meet to discuss uh, NAMA at a special conference. We're joined by Green Minister for Communications, Energy and Natural Resources, Eamon Ryan. Good morning. Good morning, Colin. And thanks for coming in. Um, in what way, we're about to see a new amend, amended bill, it was, the original was published last July, we're about to see another amended version coming out this week, is it? Yes, it yeah. should be out this week, give the opposition a, a, a bit of time to consider it before it goes to the doll next week. How will it reflect green concerns? From top to bottom, you know, we, we feel we are well placed to call a lot of this that we for years have been saying that what was going on was wrong, was speculative, was going to cause damage to the economy um, and we were right and we think we have a good call in terms of how you get, how you learn the lessons from that and actually start getting planning and development and housing and lending right in this country and in NAMA we have a difficult time in government, I mean it's a, you, you wouldn't choose the time, it has a huge responsibility attached to it but it also has the opportunity, the power to direct the planning and development of this country for the next generations. And I think that's what we want to stitch into NAMA to make sure that it works effectively on the economic sense, but also crucially that it works in terms of the planning and development of our country. The biggest concern, and I'm sure the concern of your own members who are, according to the Irish Times opinion poll last week, are actually still in the majority against the idea and in favour of nationalisation, um, is, ba- is that the banks are going to be cosseted and we're go- our money is going to be put at risk. Our members are reflecting the real fear. They have the same real fears that the public have. We haven't had, I believe, an effective debate yet on the real options that are there on, um, on how we get out of the situation that, that we have got into. Can I can maybe highlight three things? Firstly, we have insisted and brought to the table this concept about risk sharing. Uh, that public concern out there that we're going to pay too much, that we're actually, uh, the taxpayer may end up paying more than they should. I don't think, believe that's possible. I believe actually it's possible for us to design NAM in a way that the rents we get in from some of the loans that we, we own cover the cost of the interest we have to pay for buying those assets. Uh, but I think crucially, that concept of risk sharing, where the banks actually take some of the risk on any of the difference that may exist between current market value and long-term economic value, was a crucial element. And we've agreed that in principle now, and I think that's a huge development that progresses the bill. Secondly, um, for years in this country, for every government, whether it had a Labour, Fianna Gael, Fianna Fáil, Democratic Left or Progressive Democrat component, failed to actually tackle the kernel of the problem as set out by Judge Kenny in his Kenny report all those years ago, that it was the speculative profit you get, unearned, uh, on rezoning, actually incentivised this property bubble. We have to make sure we, that never happens a again. A windfall property tax on, 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 on developers, zone profits. Yeah. Zone properties. And that is that's, a, that's for the future. It's not going to change anything now. No, that's for, well, yes it is, but it is for now that you put it in. At the time where we're putting in NAMA, we're looking for absolute concrete uh, certainty that that windfall tax is applied so that we learn the, the, the lesson. But the third, can I just highlight in three? Um, as I said, there's a lot of concern there about the valuation aspect of this. I think we can get that so the taxpayer is protected. The real big issue, though, no matter what approach you do, whether you take a Fine Gael approach, Labour one, or, or, or the uh, uh, NAMA proposal, is actually getting the development right. Actually, once you have these loans, once you have responsibility for these assets, what do you do? And there's two aspects of that, I think, that are crucial. Firstly, that we get social gain from it. That we start actually, we have an ability now to do some of the things we could never do. You had disjointed development. Developers were competing bits of lands beside each other. You couldn't put together a coherent plan. With NAMA, we have an opportunity, a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, to start stitching in proper planning. To say, okay, we're going to build housing here, and we're going to have a shopping centre beside, or a community football pitch beside a school, and join it all up. Do you see any possibility that we would see... Uh, you talk about social gains, save sheltered housing for old people, to take an obvious example, into some of these uh, houses that no one's going to live in, uh, in, that aren't going to be bought on the normal market in the foreseeable future. Can you see any of, the, any of those houses, any of those properties being used for a, a social or public purpose? Yes, and I think that can happen immediately. Once we get the, over the kind of the log jam we're at uh, in terms of the, the banks having the problem, once that is stitched out, you can start immediately to say, let's use some of those properties for, for social housing. Let's look at some of the hotels that have been built that may be better placed maybe as nursing homes now. There's a whole range of different developments you could direct while making sure that NAM, as I said, 
is gets a return, makes a profit, still actually do it in a way which also gives social benefit. So it's not going on to the market, but going in effectively into the public sector in one way or another? Well, that's the public is, take, the public is taking on because our, our whole banking and development sector got it wrong. We have to step in and manage our way out of it. But in doing that, we can, yes, put public criteria, give first call for certain public institutions to, to, to get access to sites and put it together in a very coordinated way. Does the Liam Carroll case and what has happened there and the fact that so many banks didn't get involved, didn't go looking for their money, does not make you suspicious and seriously worried about the banks are waiting to take us for a ride in any way they can? See, and in the meantime, not going after people who owe them a fortune. It's the kernel of the problem. People are reading that as, as um, oh, the government are, are on the bank's side in this. I've been seeing it from the very start. The banks did not want us to take the course we had taken because it's actually forcing them to recognise the losses, to actually address the issue. The government, I believe, has no interest... Yeah, but leave aside whether you're on the bank side. I think what people are worried about is is that these guys are not chasing up loans, are not collecting interest, I, and are waiting for some kind of soft ride from NAMA in one way or another. In other words, these guys are very bright, very clever, not, uh, not in obvious ways, but when it comes to taking on the government... Well, people are worried that you'll come off second best. In the absence of, uh, of us taking this approach we're, we're taking, the banks would continue that policy for the next 10 years and work out their, their position. There's a misperception out there in the likes of this uh, Zoe case, which, which is in the courts, that it might be in the government's interest to see that delayed or, or protracted. I don't believe it is. I think it's much more in our interest to actually recognise the mistakes that we made, recognise the, the losses that have been made, and actually um, uh, write them down and actually start again, as I said, with proper planning stitched in. And that's what NAMA provides us the opportunity to do. Do you recognise that on the opinion poll evidence, even on your own supporters, that the task of convincing people this is the way to go and you're not going to be taken for a ride, you're not winning? No, it's a huge task. I think Alan Jukes maybe has helped again this morning, as has Gareth Fitzgerald, because I don't think we've had a proper debate yet on the various alternatives. It's very easy to come out and say, oh, I have a good bank idea, which sounds very plausible and very attractive. But the reality, when you look into each of the options, each has a risk. Each has a cost, possible cost associated with it. I believe that, as Alan Jukes says, the Fine Gael, uh, proposal is the most risky, least likely to, to uh, succeed, would have the most cost. Can I make one last point, or one further point, just in terms of what we're looking to actually do now? As well as our planning game, one of the other things we need to do is to get our banks lending. When we do give them this money, one of the developments we're pushing in government to say, to answer that question, how can we make sure that the banks start lending again? I think this bill has, got, has been done in the right way, in the sense that it was draft legislation. There are further significant developments that will be included in the um, uh, version that's in the second stage uh, published bill later this week. But that will, there will be further work to be done. I believe there's a requirement for us to look at how we get make sure that the banks, once cleaned up, start directing lending, that we don't just see them sitting with that money on a, on a deposit, that they start putting it into the Irish small business sector, into the energy sectors like that, where you can make a very secure, safe investment. And it's that further development is what the Green Party's in, pushing for working out how we best do that. Final question. Brian Cowan got rid of the tent of the Galway races which I'm sure you approved of, but the big thing, which is what you've been looking for in favour, a ban on political donations. Do you think he'll agree to that? I think we, as I said, we need to learn the lessons from this. Uh, and for the political system's own sake, we need to absolutely end for any one day, or any day, particularly now because we're close to the development side in terms of taking a public ownership of a lot of loans, to make sure that there's no impression whatsoever that development interests actually drive this. So yes, I believe that sort of, that sort of uh, progressive pr political step will have to happen. Yes, I know you think it should, it'll have to happen, but are you optimistic it'll happen in the lifetime of this government? People don't realise, I think quite realise, this is a new government, and at its core is green thinking. And actually, that I think is the right moment at this particular time because that is the are economic you, future of this country. In the lifetime of this um, government, I'm optimistic that this Green coalition-led government, including the Green Party, can deliver on those sort of things we've been talking about for the last thirty years. When you go to meet your supporters on Saturday and they say, "Look, this ban on political donations," God knows, after all that's happened, we should insist on this now. Will you be able to say yes, no, or maybe to them? There's a whole range of things we're going to be looking for. Uh, yeah, that among others. Is there an answer to that question? Well, we'll have our debate. Our debate next week is on NAMA, and I said that oh. is. What I said, we need to do in the party, you, but the wider public needs to do as well. But you can't well. answer that question now. There's a whole range of developments I've mentioned here today that I'm going to the oh. party saying, yes, 